Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Honor with you, good praise. Hallelujah, Jesus. share this video we are getting ready to talk about accessing the help of God but I have an interesting subject today God's order versus the new world order God's order versus the new world order share this video invite your friends right now let's build a quorum I'm getting ready to shoot some powerful stuff into our spirit right now. Share this video right now. Hallelujah. God's word is exalted above all situations. Hallelujah, share this video, share this video right now, invite your friends to tune in, we are talking about God's order versus the new world order. This is a sermon you want to hear. Hallelujah. Let's get some quorum. Share this video. I want this video to, to have some good quorum in the next few minutes so that we all get blessed together. I'm waiting for us to log in. Please tell your, tell your friends we are on. We are on. Call up your friends, your neighbors, your family. Tell them Bishop E is on. And the theme today God's order versus the new world order. Hallelujah. Francis Senelo, I see you. I see Moses Bulemi. John Degwa. Welcome. Pastor Nimro Shalo, Karibu Sana. Hallelujah. Princess Mercy. Welcome, Princess Mercy. God bless you. Pastor Dice Powers, God's order versus the new world order. Princess Vinya, Pastor Cabrera Chalo, welcome. I see Christopher Wawero, welcome, welcome. Maggie Mokite, Karibu Sana, Robert Megonda. Let's share this video, let's get some quorum. Kama vile chana, lina guvuleo, bilele. I see you, I see. Pastor Chege Mwangi, I see. Kimberly Miyale. Share this video, let's get some quorum. I want to, to get to 200 people, then we can begin to speak. Pastor Helen Ajina, lay pasta. And Mohori, welcome. Susan Oriel, Pastor Sue, welcome, Pastor Sue. Penina Kamande, come in, come in, welcome. Derek Okongo, welcome. It's gonna be amazing. We are talking about God's order 
versus the new world order. Hallelujah. Pastor Masharia from Matanya, Nanyuki, Karibu Sana. Daphne Karani, Mutungaji, welcome. <laughs> I'm enjoying uh, Godwill Babette's song, Limeinuliwa Nenolako. In this season, there is nothing we need to hear more than the fact that God's word is exalted. God's word is exalted above any any conspiracy above the enemy's plans against God's people. God's word will always be exalted. I want you to share this video. Share this video. Share this video. God is a good God. Pastor Johnny Musioki. Pastor Johnny. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Dan Hinga, I see you. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Mujungaji Daphne Karani. Welcome. Liwane no lako Kama vile jana Lina nguvu leo Bilele Angela Sita, welcome Hallelujah Amon Kepchirchir Kepchirchir Amon, welcome Oh, I'm talking about God's order Versus the new world order Share this video a few more minutes Then we start talking God is about to bless us together. I'm speaking about God's order against the new world order. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. God's word is lifted. Share this video. I'm waiting for us to get some quorum. I have a word from the Lord. I have a word. Nancy Carey, share this video. Hallelujah. So today is just a conversation. We are having a prophetic conversation. And we want to ask this question. Between God's order and the new world order, which one is greater? Makazataka Yabahadi. God is good all the time. Linangovuleo. I'm waiting for us to get to a good quorum. Please share this video. If you're watching me, share this video widely so that we have a good quorum as we go forth. I see Genevieve, a winner. Nicolette, I see you. Pastor Steve, Boss Moremi, welcome. What a word. Pastor Chege Mwangi, what a word between God's order and the new world order. Hallelujah. Dorothy Kitala, my small sister, I see you. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. Dorothy, I take that back. You are my big sister. I'm your small bro, like you said. Hallelujah. So let's get it to 150, then I begin to speak. Share this video, God's order versus the new world order. God's order versus the new world order. Let's share this video. Okwa Clement, welcome. You're late, but you're here. Welcome. Let's move. Judy Mwema, I see you. Dennis Njagi, Karibu Sana. Let's do this. Let's do this. We are talking about God's order versus the new world order. Hallelujah. Nasema unatinda tutazame unatema unatema I see Dorothy Kitala. <laughs> Dorothy Kitala, don't call me Pops, I'm your small brother. Hallelujah. Derek Okongo. Let's share this video. Let's get to 150, then I can do this. Kama vile jana, 
Pastor Wasala Koki, Maureen G. Keremi, welcome. Lydia Wangoi, I see you. Tina Tuja. It's going to be an interesting conversation. Share this video. I know Amos Kisulu is watching behind the scenes. God's order versus NWO, New World Order. Hallelujah. Share this video. Share this video. Oh. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So let's have it. I got a call today. I got a call from one of my friends around the world. I'm talking about God's order versus the new world order. I see my brother, Pastor Omos. Welcome. God's order versus the new world order. So I got a call from one of my friends today around the world. And he was sharing with me a dream that he had. That in his dream, he saw that fire appeared in the heavens, in the skies. And there were voices coming from above. And when he woke up, the first person he called was me. Because he wanted to find out if the rapture has happened and if he has been left behind. And the confirmation was, if Bishop Eric is around, probably it has not yet happened. It's a great honor, let me tell you. <laughs> so he had this dream that fire was falling and something was coming from above. And a voice came and he had to wake up. And when he wake, woke up, he thought, has the rapture happened? So the first person he called was me, all the way from his country. He called me, Bishop Eric, are you around? I said, yes. Oh, so they, Is everybody here? I said, yes. So the rapture has not happened. <laughs> Listen, the fact of the matter is that the world has entered a very interesting stage. The world has entered a stage of the birth pains of the end times. Everything we are going through is prophesied in the Bible. And right now the earth is reeling under the birth pains of the unfolding of the end times. So it is not a question whether we are in the end times or not. We are right in the end times. We are in the last day of the last days. We are in the last day of the last days. So, most of the signs of the end time have already happened. The signs of the return of Christ, most of them have already come to pass. There is so much talk about the Antichrist, about the new world order, about the launch of the 5G. <laughs> you know, the introduction of the chip, which is already happening in certain countries for services, you know, for goods and services. It will amaze you that there is countries right now that are using the chip, but for services and goods in companies and stuff like that. Praise God. Huh. So I want you to know that the work of the Antichrist is already operational, but it cannot yet come to the forefront. Yeah. The Antichrist is already in the world, but he is not fully manifested. Praise God. And so some people are afraid and some people are, are so anxious and they are wondering what will happen. And I'm getting all these calls. Bishop, are you sure it's not the end of the world? Are we around the time to go? Are we about to go? And I have come to bring my small contribution of my understanding scripturally of what God is doing. Uh, you better sit down we are going to talk i want to bring my small contribution i want to weigh in in revelation in a small contribution of what i see in the bible and i want to begin by saying this jude chapter number 24 verse number 25 i want you to know this if you're a child of god the book of jude chapter number 24 and verse number 25. This is what the Bible says. Now to him who is able to keep us from falling. Now to him that is able to keep us from falling. And to present us faultless 
before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to God our Savior be glory and majesty dominion and power both now and forevermore to God our Savior who alone is wise be glory and majesty dominion power both now and forevermore listen to me child of God I don't care what you think about what is happening right now I don't know who you think is more powerful but I came to tell you the Bible says there is one that is able to keep us from falling the only wise God to him be glory and honor and majesty and dominion and power forever there is nothing that can cause the plan of God concerning God's children to fail to come to pass before God has allowed everything that he has written to come to pass. Write this down. This is interesting. God is the sovereign authority over all powers and all dominions. God is greater than China. God is greater than Europe. God is greater than America. There is no power on the face of the earth that is more powerful than the God that called us. God is not under siege. And God is not embattled. I need us to understand this because if you don't understand it as a child of God, you will be running helter skelter in fear. Are we about to be finished? Is the world coming to an end? I want you to know something. Nothing can come to an end until the God that saved you, until the God that called you commands it to come to an end. You will not come to an end because of 5G, because of the new world order, because of the Antichrist. It is Christ that will dictate what happens at the end. I don't know who I'm talking to. Psalm 22, verse number 28. And stay with me. I have something to show you. Psalm 22, verse number 28. For the kingdom is the Lord's. The kingdom is the Lord's. And he rules over the nations. Ay, 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 ay. God rules over America. God rules over China. He rules over Russia. Whether you know it or not, God is in charge. My God. There is nothing that can happen on the face of the earth against the will of God. There is no country that can dictate the way the world will go unless God allows it and I will show you scripturally God rules over nations we have kings over nations but God is the God of all flesh my God God the constituency of God's leadership it includes kings God leads kings and he leads nations Psalm 62 verse number 11. We are not going anywhere until God says it. Nothing is coming to an end until God says it. You will not be destroyed. God will not allow it. My God. My God. Psalm 62 verse number 11. God has spoken once. Twice I have heard him. Power belongs to God. Power belongs to God. Even the power in America belongs to God. The power in Russia belongs to God. The power in China belongs to God. Now, there is no power that can be used against the purposes of God. All the power available on the earth, it belongs to God. Now, let me shock you. Jesus, number two, has already triumphed over all the powers, over all the dominions, and seated at the right hand side of God in power and authority. Ephesians chapter number one. Let me shock you here. Eh? 
you as a child of God, when the world is running and wondering what will happen, you must not behave like the world. You must have a strange peace in your heart. You must have a strange peace. A strange peace must be in your heart because you belong to the king of the universe. The God of all flesh is your father. Can you imagine somebody calling me in the morning? Are we, are we, are we, are we, are we still here? Are we going? It's what is happening? Ephesians 1 19. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in heavenly places above principalities above principalities above powers above dominions and every name that is named not only in this age but in the one to come and he has put all things under his feet and given him to be the head over all things even for the church which is the body the fullness of him that fills all things listen to me child of God you see what we call the Antichrist, what we call science, what we call New Age, what we call Freemasonry, whatever you can imagine. All those powers are under the power of Jesus. All those powers are under the power of Jesus. Can you type here right now? All those powers are under the power of Jesus. There is no power higher than the power of Jesus. That is why his name is King of Kings. His name is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He is the God above every kingdom, above every so-called God. Colossians chapter number 2, verse number 13. And I'm showing you some. I want to show you what God is about to do in the nations of the world. Because God is about to show up and show off. God is about to show the world who is boss. Colossians 2, 13. And you being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he made you alive together with him keep sharing this video he made you alive together with him having forgiven all your trespasses having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us which was contrary to us and he has taken it out of the way having nailed it on the cross having disarmed powers having disarmed powers Having disarmed powers and principalities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them. As a child of God, you need to choose. You need to choose what to believe. Do you believe that God is powerful? Or do you believe that, you know, China is coming to destroy us with all these kinds of things that they want to put up? I want you to know that God is able to stop any country, to stop any wickedness, to stop any dominion, to stop any principality from coming against uh, the purposes of God on the face of the earth. I'm going to show you something by the end of this sermon that will shock you. So, Number two, Jesus has already triumphed over the powers and dominions and seated above them in authority. Number three, write this down. God has given man free will. God has given man free will, but God has not given man sovereign will. God has given man free will. Ay, 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 ay. God has given man free will, free will, but he has not given man sovereign will. And I will explain what it means. In Genesis, in Genesis chapter number two, verse number 15, we see God giving man will. The Bible says then God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to tend it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, of every tree of the garden, you may freely eat. You have free will. You may freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat of it. For in the day you eat of it, 
you shall surely die. Let me show you what that means. It means there is a consequence of trying to break the sovereign will of God. God will not allow any nation on the face of the earth to break his sovereign will because there is no human being that has sovereign will. We have free will, but we don't have sovereign will. God is the only one that goes by the name God of all flesh. See, Adam did not understand this. She thought that God is good. If he has given me the garden, of course, he might be able, even if I eat what he said. Listen, there are consequences of dealing with certain boundaries. And I want you to know that all the nations of the world, even the kings of the world, they have an end to their rule. My God, there is no king that can reign above what God has commanded. Even the sun knows where to shine. The moon knows where to shine. The sea knows where to rain. It cannot cross the borders. <coughs> Let me show you something. So, I want you to know, God has given man free will. But he has not given man sovereign will. You cannot decide what to do entirely. You can decide for you, but you can't decide for humanity because there is a God that is a God of all flesh. China cannot decide what to do. America cannot decide what to do with the world. Hey. I don't know who I'm talking to here. Number four, write this down. God has a control mechanism in heaven that checks rogue governments on the earth. God has a control mechanism in heaven that checks every rogue government on the face of the earth. The fact that we have a government and we have governments and the face, the fact that we have superpowers does not mean that they are super gods. There is a God that reigns over superpowers. There is a God that says this far and no further. Even as you are worried, you should know this. There is a God that has already decided as for my children, as for my creation, no weapon formed against them. The Bible says it is God that raises up kings and brings down kings god has a system god has a system that checks rogue powers god has a system that checks rogue powers when all this 5g nonsense is running around i want you to know that it is not that there is no god in heaven there is a god that can say no and he has said it let me show you something jesus is not in heaven watching things happen helplessly Jesus is not in heaven watching things happen helplessly Jesus is not helpless the Bible says he triumphed over the powers and the principalities and the dominions the Bible says he disarmed them and he is seated at the right hand side of God the Father he is not helpless Jesus is not in heaven wondering what will I do. He's not just interceding. Jesus is ruling on earth through the host of heaven. Hear this word. Through the host of heaven, Jesus is controlling the events that are happening. My God. The Bible says in Psalm 110, verse number 1 to 2, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies a footstool until I make a, your enemies a footstool coming against the agenda of God will be turned into a footstool let me show you the Lord said to my Lord sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool the Lord shall send the rod of your strength out of Zion rule in the midst of your enemies rule in the midst of the enemies in the midst of all the enemies we are seeing listen Jesus is ruling in the midst of the enemies Jesus is ruling in the midst of the enemies Jesus is ruling in the midst of the nations Jesus is the king that rules among us kings and over kings 
my God. You ask me, man of God, how is Jesus ruling? How is Jesus ruling? Are you sure about what you're talking about? Do you know what you're... How is Jesus ruling? Let me show you. Let me show you. Jesus is ruling through the spirit of prophecy. Jesus is ruling on the earth through the spirit of prophecy. Prophecy is God's boundary of what should happen and until where. One thing you will come to realize about God. God is the one that speaks the end from the beginning. Before anything materializes on the face of the earth, God will decree how far it will go. He will decree how far. He said to Abraham, know for a fact that your descendants will be slaves in a foreign land for 440 years after which I will come and deliver them with a mighty strong hand. God foresaw every pandemic. He foresaw every superpower rising. He knows until where. The Bible says in Revelations chapter number 19 verse number 10 that the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Christ. Is the testimony of Christ. It is Christ that created all things. The Bible says there is nothing that has been created without him. Nothing has been created without him. And when Christ was creating, he already prophesied. My God. There is nothing that catches God by accident. I repeat, there is nothing that catches God by accident. Every problem on the earth has an expiry date. It has a shelf life. Every power that thinks that it can reign over the interests of Jesus and the interests of God, it has a shelf life. The Bible says in 2 Peter, chapter number 1, verse number 19, and this is a conversation for the mature. You have to know that you have a God that is reigning. Second Peter, chapter number 1, verse number 19. And so we have the prophetic word confirmed, which we do well to heed unto, as unto a light in a dark place, shining in a dark place, until the day dawns and the morning star rises in our hearts. Jesus controls the events of life through prophetic utterances. There is nothing that will ever find expression on the face of the earth globally in terms of dominions and powers that has not been prophesied. Everything that unfolds in the world, everything that happens, happens in line and in confirmation of prophecy share this video i want you to understand nothing just happened it must be permitted and when it is permitted it has a limit god is reigning and he reigns through the spirit of prophecy he reigns through the spirit of prophecy that determines boundaries so even when we are talking about global warming Oh, something is about to hit the earth from outer space. Let me tell you, nothing can hit the earth unless it is written that it will hit the earth. They can see it, they can say it, they can see it coming, but it will never arrive unless it is written. Unless it is written. And the things that are happening now are the things that are written. So how does Jesus reign? Number one, Jesus reigns on earth from heaven through the spirit of prophecy he will do nothing until he reveals it to his servants the prophets if you didn't hear it now it is probably written there will come wars and rumors of wars pestilences will come you know pandemics will come but they are already predicted they are already predicted so you cannot be walking around like oh my god god has forsaken us will the children of god be destroyed together with the wicked no nothing happens on the earth that has not been predicted now let me show you the second way that Jesus reigns on the earth. You will be shocked. Number two, Jesus reigns on the earth through God's 
kingdom by God. He reigns on the earth through God's kingdom, which is in heaven on earth. Now, let me shock you. As we are speaking now, as we are speaking now, beyond what people have discovered or reported, there are legions of angels whose sole assignment on the earth is to enforce God's will that is in heaven on earth. And I'm going to prove it. There are legions, angels, who are operating on earth right now to enforce the will of God which is in heaven on earth. They are here. The devil has no power to create a destiny or to create a future. All futures and all destinations are created by God prophetically and they are enforced by angels literally on the face of the earth. I'm going to show you. Stay with me. This is a very powerful scripture I'm about to read for you. I'm going to show you an example of a king who reigned over superpower. One of the kings that was the greatest king of his day. A superpower of his day. I want to show you in the life of Nebuchadnezzar that there is no kingdom on earth that can impose anything that God has not allowed. Let me show you. Daniel, I want you to stay with me. I'm going to read a scripture and it's important for you to understand the scripture as I'm reading it because you will understand that your life, Satan will never have a say in your life that God has not permitted. So all this here, oh, Sijin, the new world order and they want to do this because of 5G and then we will die and then it will be the end of the world. Listen, if it is not permitted, it will not come to pass. He will confound the powers. He will confuse them. He will destroy their wisdom and frustrate their intelligence. Hey, Daniel chapter number four, write it down in your notebook or whatever. Daniel four, I want to show you. Daniel chapter number 4 is one of the greatest demonstrations of the power of God on the face of the earth by God from heaven. I want to show you that there is no one man who is president who has authority over people that God did not give them the authority. <coughs> Daniel chapter number 4 verse number 1 share this story. It's a very interesting story. This is an account of the king himself. This is what he reported of his experience with God. This is what Trump can say. This is what the president of China can say. This is what Putin can say when push comes to show. Hear this. Nebuchadnezzar. This is Daniel chapter number four. Nebuchadnezzar the king. He is talking to all the people, all the nations and the languages that dwell in all the earth. Peace be multiplied to you. I thought it good to declare the signs and the wonders that the Most High God has worked for me. Hey. This is a king writing a letter. He's writing a letter to Kenya. He's writing it to Uhuru Kenyatta, to Magufuli. He's writing it to China, to Putin in Russia. He's saying, I am Nebuchadnezzar the king. All the people, all the nations, all the languages that dwell on the earth, peace be multiplied to you. I have thought it good to declare the signs and wonders that the Most High God has worked for me. How great are his signs and how mighty his wonders. His kingdom, this is a king talking, his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, my God. And his dominion is from generation to generation. My God. I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at rest in my house. I was flourishing in my palace. And I saw a dream which made me afraid. And the thoughts on my bed and the visions of my, my head, they troubled me. 
Therefore, I issued a decree to bring all the wise men of Babylon before me that they may make known to me the interpretation of the dream. Then the magicians, the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers came in and I told them the dream. But they did not make known to me its interpretation. But at last, Daniel came before me. His name is Belteshazzar, according to the name of my God. In him is the spirit of the Holy Ghost. And I told the dream before him, saying, Belteshazzar, chief of the magicians, because I know that the spirit of the Holy God is in you and no secret troubles you. Explain to me the vision of my dream that I have seen and its interpretation. This is a king talking to a man of God. Continue sharing this video. Verse number 10. These were the visions of my head while I was on my bed. I was looking and behold a tree in the midst of the earth and its height was great. The tree grew and became strong. Its height reached to the heavens and it could be seen to the ends of the earth. Its leaves were lovely. Its fruit was abundant and it was for food for all. The beasts of the field found shade under it. The birds of the heavens dwelt in the branches and all flesh was fed from it. And I saw the visions of my head while on my bed, there was a water. There was a water, a holy one, coming down from heaven. And he cried aloud and said this word. Chop down the tree. Cut off its branches. Strip off, strip off its leaves. Scatter its fruit. Let the beasts get out from under it. And the birds from its branches, nevertheless, leave the stump and the roots in the earth. Hear this? Bound with a band of iron and bronze in the tender grass of the field. Let it be wet with the dew of heaven. Let him graze with the beasts on the grace on the grass of the earth. Let his heart be changed from that of a man. And let him be given the heart of a beast. And let seven times pass over him. This decision is by the decree of the watchers. And the sentence, listen to me. This decision. Ha, ya, 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 ya. This is not the African nations. The Africa, the, the United Nations. This decision is by the decree of the watchers. And the sentence by the word of the holy ones. In order that the living may know, that the living may know, that the living may know, that the most high rules in the kingdoms of men. I don't know which country you come from. I know you know your president, but I want to tell you who really rules. Rules. That those that are living may know that the most high rules in the kingdoms of men. Give it to whomever he will and sets over it the lowest of men. Verse number 18. This dream I, Nebuchadnezzar, have seen. Now you, Belteshazzar, declare the interpretation. Since all the wise men of my kingdom are not able to make known to me the interpretation, but you are able, for the spirit of the holy God is in you. Daniel explains the dream to the king. Then Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, was astonished for a time. And his thoughts troubled him. And so the king spoke and said to Belteshazzar, Do not be afraid. Don't let the dream and its interpretation trouble you. Belteshazzar answered and said, My lord, the dream concerns, I pray that the dream concerns those that hate you. And its interpretation concerns your enemies. This is the meaning of the dream. The tree that you saw, which grew and became strong, whose height reached the heavens, which could be seen by all the earth, whose leaves were lovely and its fruits abundant, in which was food for all, under which the beasts of the field dwelt, and in whose branches the birds of the heaven had their home. 
it is you, O King, who has grown and become strong. For your greatness has grown and reaches the heavens and your dominion to the ends of the earth. Listen to this. And inasmuch as the king saw a water, a holy one, coming down from heaven and saying, chop down the tree, destroy it, but leave its stump and roots in the earth. Bind it with a bind of iron and bronze in the tender grass of the field. Let it be wet and the dew of heaven and let him graze with the beasts of the field till seven times pass over him. This is the interpretation, O king. And this is the decree of the Bosai, which has come upon my lord the king. They shall drive you from amongst men. Your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make you to eat grass like oxen. They shall wet you with the dew of the heavens. Seven times shall pass over you till you know that the most high God rules in the kingdoms of men. He rules in the kingdoms of men and gives it to whomsoever he will. And inasmuch as they gave the command to leave the stump and root of the tree, your kingdom shall be assured to you. After you have come to know the heaven rules, after you have come to know the heaven rules, after you have come to know the heaven rules, therefore, O king, let my advice be acceptable to you. Break off your sins and being righteous and your iniquity by showing mercy to the poor. Perhaps there may be lengthening of your prosperity. Listen to this. Verse number 28. And this came upon Nebuchadnezzar. At the end of the 12 months, he was walking about the royal palace of Babylon. And the king spoke saying, listen to Nebuchadnezzar. Just like China is behaving now. Like America is behaving. Listen to what Nebuchadnezzar said. He said this. Is this not great Babylon? that I have built for a royal dwelling by my mighty power and for the honor of my majesty. Listen to this. While the words were still in the king's mouth, a voice fell from heaven. King Nebuchadnezzar, oh. to you it is spoken. The kingdom has departed from you. And they shall drive you from men. And your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. And they shall make you eat grass like oxen. And seven times shall pass over you. Until you know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men. And gives it to whomsoever she will. My God. Verse number 33. That very hour, the word of God was fulfilled concerning Nebuchadnezzar. He was driven from men and he began to eat grass like oxen. His body was wet and the dew of the heaven till his hair had grown like the eagle's feathers and his nails like bird's clothes. My God. And at the end of the time, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted my eyes to heaven. And my understanding returned to me. And I blessed the Most High. And praised and honored him who lives forever. For his dominion is an everlasting dominion. His kingdom is from generation to generation. All the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. He does, listen to this, he does according to his will in the army of heaven. He does according to his will in the army of heaven. And among us, the inhabitants of the earth, no one can restrain his hand. Nor can anyone tell him, what have you done? And at the same time, my reason returned to me. For the glory of my kingdom, my honor and splendor returned to me. My counselors and the nobles resorted to me. I was restored to my kingdom. And excellent majesty was added to me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the king of heaven, of whose works are truth and his ways justice. And those who walk in pride, she is able to bring down. My God. I know we have kingdoms, we have governments, we have authorities. But Nebuchadnezzar realized 
that God does according to his will by the armies of heaven. Hey, my God. If you're a child of God right now, I want you to know that there is nothing that can come over this earth that God has not permitted. As on the face of the earth, God does according to his will. There are always angelic hosts who are called watchers. Every king is being watched. Every country is being watched. Every ruler has a watcher. And these watchers come with holy ones. Listen, there are always angelic hosts who are called watchers. And the holy ones who demand, they demand share this video they demand the sentence of god's word both written in scripture and prophesied there are angels that demand the performance of the word of god they demand the performance of prophecy i don't care who china is or who russia is or what america is there is a god of host armies who does according to his will by the armies of heaven there is a god and the bible says on earth he rules in the kingdoms of men it's not that he will start his own country he will go to china and sit in state house in china and rule china when the king is still there my god listen to what nebuchadnezzar learned in verse number 17 huh this is what the angels do. This decision, there are certain decisions that are beyond the executive of any country. They are beyond the Senate. They are beyond the governors. They are beyond the cabinet secretary. There are certain decisions in verse number 17. This decision is by the decree of watchers. It's by the decree of watchers. Akisema takobariki, akunata kaezuia, kwanie yendie mungu mwenye baraka zot. If God says uh, he will bless Africa, there is no China that can stop it. The decision is by the decree of the watchers and the sentence by the word of the holy ones. These watchers, they come to demand that scripture must be fulfilled. They come to demand that the prophetic unction in your word, what God said about you, it must come to pass. Whether you have a rich uncle or not, there is a watching angel. There are angels called watchers. There are angels called the holy ones that make demands. They make demands. Let me remind you something. It took one angel to humble Nebuchadnezzar who was the superpower of the world one angel you would think they would need armies it took one angel when he said look at what I have done with my might an angel shouted Nebuchadnezzar the kingdom has been taken from you 2nd Kings 1935 and it came to pass on a certain night that the angel of the Lord went out and killed in the camp of the Assyrians 185,000. And when the people rose up in the morning, there were corpses all over. The kingdom of God is more powerful than atomic weapons. It's more powerful than weapons of mass destruction. When God says, I will preserve you, not even a government can stop it. That is why in the Old Testament, they used to fear prophets. Because if a prophet spoke, they represented an army of heaven. They represented the government of God. Child of God, have peace. Have peace. You will only leave this earth when God permits it. We will leave this earth during the rapture. Tribulation cannot befall the land until the church is lifted. Make every effort to be part of the church. It took one angel to humble the king of the superpower of his day. One angel humbled the guy that was like Donald Trump today. An angel. Can you imagine Donald Trump sitting in his house saying, look at what I have built. And an angel shouts from heaven, Donald, Donald. It's just an example. One angel is lethal enough to destroy a whole army. 
we serve a great God. We serve a great God. We serve a great God. And he is not confused. What will I do about my children? God is not confused. God is not confused. I want to give us, as the body of Christ, instructions for the end times. Because as much as we say God is in charge, also the rapture can happen any moment. I want to give you instructions for the end time. Instructions for the end time. Instruction number one, and there are only three. The first instruction of living in these end times. Number one, write this down. Humble yourself under God's mighty hand. Humble yourself under God's mighty hand. As we are going through the end times, I want you to be part of what God's mighty hand is. Stay under the covering of God. Because we have already seen that the governments of this earth have failed. Every government of this earth has failed. Only the government of God can prevail. It would be very funny for a child of God going through the end times like we are. To not be subject to God's government. Let me show you something very interesting. You are not even permitted to fight the devil until you are submitted to the government of God. For instruction number one. Humble yourself under God's mighty hand during this end time. We, we can leave this earth anytime. But anybody that is not under God's government cannot go. Let me show you something. First Peter chapter number 5 verse number 6. Therefore humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he may exhort you in due time casting all your cares upon him for he cares about you. Then the Bible continues to say this is what we don't see. Be sober. Be vigilant because your adversary the devil walks around like a roaring lion seeking whom to devour. Resist him steadfastly in the faith knowing that the suffering you are experiencing it has been experienced by your brotherhood in the whole world but may the god of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by jesus christ after you have suffered for a little while perfect you establish you strengthen you settle you to him be glory and the dominion forever and ever amen if there is ever a time that you need to decide whether you are in the world or you are in Christ or you are in the church, it is now. Because right now, the mountain of God has become the highest mountain in the end times. The mountain of God is the highest mountain. The mountain of God. The greatest place. That is why kings like David would say, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And going to the house of the Lord is beyond going to a building. It is being in the presence of God. In the fellowship of the Holy Ghost. In the fellowship of Christ. How interesting. It starts by humble yourself. Then it says resist the devil. Don't try to resist before you humble. People that try to resist Satan before they subject themselves to the government of God, what they suffer is failure. So number one, humble yourself under God's mighty hand and understand God's authority in earth is men. The Bible says men are the custodians of the mystery of Christ. And custodians must be found to be faithful. When God sends you people to reach you, to preach the word of God to you, to feed your spirit, you must not be a person that is unteachable, unshepherdable. You cannot be bastard. You, you, you are one of those people that fight men of God everywhere. Listen, the end times is not a time for the church to fight one another. It is the time for the church to be together, to be in a place called Goshen, to resist the devil together. We are not resisting one another. We are resisting Satan. All the governments of the earth have come together. Come together to try and combat COVID-19. 
I wonder will the church come together to fight what is coming against us? The church sometimes has people that the best they can do is fight. Fight all kinds of things. Fight, fight this one. Tomorrow you wake up in the morning, look for something to fight. Listen, it does not help the body. Humble yourself. Don't criticize. Humble. Under God's mighty hand. So number one, humble yourself under God's mighty hand. Number two, join in the demand of the holy ones and the decree of watchers. As a child of God, it is your work to agree with the demand of the holy ones and the decree of watchers. If there is ever a time the church needs to be in agreement to say the same thing, it is now. Now, the first thing, you know, I'm shocked. And I said, I, I, I thank God for, for wisdom and leadership. The first thing that was imposed after the pandemic, even without talking about the closing of markets first, the first thing was the church. Close down the church. Close down the church. Let me ask you, do you know what would happen? If this lockdown continued for a year, that there is no physical service, that you cannot meet and come together and fellowship. And I'm not talking about the strong ones. Do you know what would happen to the young believers? Agree. We need to come together. We need to become an agreement, an assembly of a strong body that agrees with Christ. We are not looking at what is not working yet. We know God can make it work in time. We are looking for agreement, for unity. You must join the demand of the holy ones and the decree of the watchers. How do you join them? You must begin to make governmental prayers. And I'm speaking to every believer. You must begin to pray prayers like this. Father, your kingdom come on earth. Your will be done as it is in heaven. Whatever the watchers are saying, I agree with the watchers. I agree with the prophecy. I agree with what is written. Otherwise, in a few days, the church will be so scattered and weak. God forbid. God forbid. The, the church does not scatter and weaken because we don't meet. It scatters and weakens because we don't agree. Agree. There must be an agreement. There must be an agreement. Agreement. Unity is vital. So you must join the demand of the holy ones and the decree of the watchers. An older man of God taught me one day, fight what God is fighting and bless what God is blessing. Praise God. Jeremiah 1.10, how do you join the watchers? How do you join the watchers and the decree of the watchers? The, Jeremiah 1.10, see, I have set you this day over nations, over kingdoms, to root out, to pull down, to destroy, to throw down, to build and to plant. God wants us, when God is saying, I'm rooting, we also say we root out with you. I'm throwing down. We throw down with you. I'm building up. I build up with you. Bible says you shall not say to the angel it was a mistake. So the first thing we miss, we need to do as the body of Christ, we must humble ourselves under God's might. Listen, if you're watching me right now, find out how your pastor is doing. Call them. Find out how the people in your department that you are serving with, find out how they are doing. Pray with them. Encourage one another. We need to encourage each other as the body of Christ. We need to remain united. It's not time to think, ah, oh, it's okay. Even, I don't know, I was not enjoying that church anyway. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. No. Find out how your leaders are doing. The Bible says in 2 Chronicles 2020, believe in the Lord, you shall be established. Believe in his prophets, you shall prosper. You must believe. To believe is actually to embrace. My God, call them. Find out how you're doing. Are you okay? I've missed the services. I missed our fellowship. Fellowship does not stop with gathering. When we don't gather, it's 
stop. Fellowship must never stop. It must continue online. It must continue on WhatsApp. You should call up and find out how you doing. Are you still standing? Are you still praying? My God. Pour yourself under God's mighty hand. Number two, join the demand of the holy ones and the decree of the watchers to prophesy, to pray, to enforce what God is doing. And finally, number three, number three, and I want you to hear me. I want you to hear me. Listen. Live a holy life that is ready to meet with Jesus should the end come now. Live a holy life. Live ready. Live ready. Listen. All the signs of the end times are with us. You know, there are people that like gambling. During the days of Noah and the flood, they started criticizing the ark. This ark, what's wrong with this person? Because they had never seen the rain. The reason we live and ready is because we have never seen a rapture. We have never seen people taken away. Listen, it is time to be ready. When you see a global lockdown of churches, you don't know what can follow. You don't know when the trumpet can sound, my friend. I started by telling you that my, my brother from across the world, he called, he said, listen, I had a dream. I'm just calling you to find out if you raptured or I was left or if everybody is still around. We don't know the time. Nobody knows the hour. Nobody knows the time that the son of God, listen, that the rapture will happen. The Bible says in the twinkling of an eye, two will be in the field. One will be taken, one will be left. Some of my friends, we were calling each other and we were asking each other, guy, you guy, are you ready to go to heaven? You know, one of the most amazing things I've seen about Christian, all of us want to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. Should you die today, where will be your final destination? Lockdown is not an opportunity for fornication. Lockdown is not an opportunity to watch pornography and defile yourself and become prayerless and become unholy and cuth. Lockdown is an opportunity to seek God, to go deeper, to go deeper with God, to go deeper with God, to share mysteries, to go deeper in the word. God is saying, I want my children to be ready. Listen, don't think that God will not come because you are not married. You are marrying is not the character, the criteria for us going. Don't think God will not come because you have not driven a car. God can come. Jesus can. We can be raptured anytime. Live ready. Number one. Praise God. The first thing we said. Humble yourself under God's mighty hand. Make sure that the pastor God gave you and the authorities that are watching over your soul, that you make it easy for them to pastor you during this time. That when they check on you, you don't go offline. You don't, you don't, you, are you getting what I'm saying? You should be the one asking your man of God, what is God saying? Is there anything God has told you for us? That is why every day I'm preaching online because I must preach to my congregation. God has given me. Number one, humble yourself under God's mighty hand and then resist the devil. Number two, number two, I said, join the demand of the holy ones and the decrees of the watchers. Pray governmental prayers. Exercise the authority of Christ in your life. Declaration. Declare to the firmaments uh, the mystery of Christ. Uh, you must disarm powers by the mystery of Christ. Christ in us, the hope of glory. And number three, you must live ready. You must be ready. You must be ready. Listen, what if rapture happens before the lockdown is over we must ask ourselves hard questions what if christ comes back share this video with somebody don't stop sharing what if rapture happens are you ready i would hate god forbid that the rapture has happened and guys that you used to see in the world are asking you what are you doing here what are you doing here get ready pray up put your house in order Cleanse your life. Huh? Cleanse your clothes.
The Bible says we shall see him with white cloth. We shall be given white cloth. Cleanse your heart. Purify your thoughts. Get ready. Get ready. Live ready. Any day, any time, be ready. Hebrews 10, 24. And I'm finishing here. And let us consider one another in order to start up love and good works not forsaking the assembling together of the brethren as is the manner of some but exhorting one another so much as more as we see the day is approaching for if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth there is no more there remains no more a sacrifice of sin but a certain fearful expectation of judgment and fiery indignation which will devour the adversaries. We must live ready. I thought it wise to bring you this broadcast today. When I go offline, I wanted to share this video with as many people as possible. People need to know that although God is in charge and there is no power, who is China, who is Russia, who is America, where God is concerned, Nebuchadnezzar said, Nebuchadnezzar said, now I know that God reigns and rules in the kingdoms of men, not in his kingdom only, even in your kingdom, he rules. And that the word is by the decree of the watchers and the demand of the holy ones. By the sentence of the holy ones. May you be found ready. I was asking myself today as a pastor. The people I preach to. Are they going? <laughs> My prayer is. Get yourself ready. We do our part as men of God. We do the little we can. But ultimately, you must get yourself ready. You must allow God to prepare you to meet Christ. Listen, even if you don't meet him by rapture, today people are dying everywhere and I know we have protection. We have protection. Are you ready to meet God? Are you ready to meet God? Are you ready to meet Jesus? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Look at this. What is lockdown? global lockdown and i'm not saying that this is the end of the world. i'm just saying you you must use this as a re for when things can go haywire are you ready to meet your god 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 is the word of god lifted in your life more than the things of this world are you ready to go i pray for you i pray that god prepares you though god sanctifies you that Jesus will be your good shepherd in all seasons. That if the trumpet sounds today, may you be found ready. May you be found ready. I was talking to Brother Nana today and he was saying, Mother, I am ready to go. <laughs> and I said, me too. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready to go. Father, I pray for my viewers right now. I pray for everybody that is watching me that nobody under the sound of my voice that has heard this video nobody will ever fail to meet the threshold for being in your presence none of us I give you praise I give you glory I give you praise Lord should the rapture happen tonight we know that the mystery of ungodliness is already in the world but it cannot be revealed because of the church because of the holy ghost but should it happen tonight may we be found worthy to go worthy to appear in your presence father we give you praise hallelujah praise god may god sanctify you and prepare you in jesus name have you been blessed have you been blessed or are you scared it's not time to be scared. It's time to be ready. It's time to have the love of God shed abroad in our hearts. It's time for us to identify with the King of Glory. If you desire to give an offering, you can go ahead and do it through our online platforms. God bless you. May God lift you. Share this video widely. And may God bless you. May God lift you. Nothing is worth you being left by Christ or by failing to be part of those that are among us the number nothing is worth it not money not relationship not business nothing not bitterness of heart connect with god
and God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.